What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Joe's Tech. Very excited about our little project today, which is gonna be taking a look at the Kraken G12 from NZXT. This is a GPU mounting kit, which basically allows you to replace the stock cooler on your graphics card with this mounting bracket. And the bracket then will allow you to connect an AIO cooler such as the Kraken X42 uh, or several other options out there. Now, I also picked up one of these NZXT internal USB hubs. Uh, a lot of you guys had asked me on previous videos what to do when you only have one USB 2.0 header available and you want to add some of those other accessories that um, you know utilize that same technology. So I went ahead and picked one of these up. I figured I'd mention it. If you guys had any questions about it or wanted me to do a separate review, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Going back to the G12, there is a few things to mention before we get started. This kit is available in two color variations. They offer a white shroud or a black shroud. Both of those are currently priced at $29 US and that obviously doesn't include the cost of the AIO cooler that you decide to go with. One thing that is nice that NZXT has done is they actually have made it so that there's about 30 other coolers out there currently that are compatible with this kit and that's not only NZXT branded AIOs. So I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below if you'd like to go to their site and see what that compatibility list looks like. And they also say that this shroud is actually compatible with around 40 current GPUs, which is pretty nice. And that information is also available on their site as well. Obviously the cooling of the card itself is going to be performed on the GPU by the AIO that you're going to be adding in there. And the VRMs and the rest of the card are going to receive some cooling from the 92 millimeter fan that comes pre-installed in the G12. So for testing today, we're going to be using my EVGA GTX 1070 Superclocked Edition. If you guys have seen my channel before, obviously my card in particular, which is in the build behind me, is not the best overclocker, but this morning I went ahead and put an 80 megahertz overclock on the GPU and a 350 megahertz overclock on the memory, and I was running the Time Spy and Fire Strike Extreme uh, stress tests on loop a few times just to kind of see how hot I could get it. The highest I was able to achieve was about 67 degrees, but it kind of peaked at uh, between 65 and 67 pretty much for the entire uh, duration of that, that stress test. And so that's pretty much where I'm gonna set the bar as of right now with the stock cooler. Now keeping those numbers in mind, we're gonna go ahead and install the G12 mounting kit and we're gonna install the Kraken X42 and try to squeeze this bad boy into the case behind me and we'll rerun those stress tests. Now NZXT did mention on their site that this cooling solution could provide as much as 40% increased performance, which will put us right around 40C and that would be great if we could do that under the load, but let's go ahead and get this stuff installed and uh, you know, see how it works out.
So as you guys can see behind me, we got the G12 GPU kit installed and we got the Kraken X42 installed and it is exhausting out of the case. If you guys didn't notice, I changed my shirt and that's because I ended up actually cutting this video a little short the other day. I ran a little bit of preliminary testing before I was gonna uh, start capturing everything for the video. And of course I was seeing uh, temps actually in the mid to high 80s, like 87 degrees peaking uh, when I was running the Fire Strike stress test on the GPU. So obviously there's something wrong there. Initially, I was getting uh, issues where the GPU was getting hot, but the liquid cooling wasn't getting hot. So I went ahead and created a custom fan curve and I put the fan on the radiator at 100%. I also put the fan on the GPU at 100% and that actually helped. It brought the temps down to like the high 70s, uh, but I was still actually kind of peaking into the, into the mid to high 80s at times. So there's obviously not something correct. The fluid inside the radiator is actually staying around uh, I want to say 41 degrees, 42 degrees. So after kind of talking with NZXT over the last couple days, uh, they've been great with kind of supporting me through this whole process. And uh, I, it's, it seems like the bottom line is there's not good contact between the GPU and the Kraken X42. So uh, before we get too crazy, it looks like I'm having good contact, but before we get too crazy, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and take the whole thing apart. I'm gonna replace the thermal paste, so I'll be back in just a second. We'll see what happens. Well, I went ahead and took the GPU apart again and I replaced the thermal compound with some of this Arctic Silver 5 that I had laying around from a previous project. Uh, and I went ahead and just put a nice bead on there instead of doing like an even spread. And the reasoning I did that is because the thermal compound that came on the cooler from the factory, for some reason, it looked like it didn't compress correctly with the GPU. So I'm not sure if, uh, you know, the way this cooler is made is to have it that uh, level of thinness for a, like a CPU installation, which is what the cooler is obviously made for. Um, or if it's just maybe the cooler that I got had a little bit drier of thermal compound on it and it just wasn't getting good contact. So either way, uh, this is kind of a learning experience for me as well going forward. Whenever I do an install of something like this, I think it's just a good idea to go ahead and clean off that stock thermal compound. Even if your cooler is brand new out of the box, which this one was, uh, go ahead and clean it off with some alcohol and then just go ahead and replace it with a newer th thermal compound so you know that you're getting a really good contact. Now getting into testing the cooler, I already knew right off the bat as soon as I replaced the thermal compound that things were going to be good. Um, I, I was having idle temps around 29 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius, which is much better than I was getting uh, before I replaced that thermal compound. Um, so I was really happy to see that. I went ahead and ran the fire strike stress test several times to kind of uh, wean myself into the uh, the testing you know I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to overheat anything like I was seeing prior to doing that replacement now uh, what I did is I went ahead and ran the card stock no overclock with the standard fan curve and I was getting 48 degrees Celsius which I thought was incredibly reasonable um, I then went ahead and ran with the plus 80 megahertz overclock on this on the GPU and the plus 350 megahertz overclock on the RAM of the card and at that point I was getting still about 48 C, not a change at all in the temperatures. Um, so what I did then is I went ahead and bumped up the fan curve and I just set it static at 80, uh, I'm sorry, 80% 80 on the fan that that's pulling air through the radiator and 80% on the pump. So you can definitely hear it when it's running at this, this uh, speed, but it's really, really reasonable. It's not till you get in the 90 to 100% range that the fan is just out of control. But uh, I wanted to kind of crank it up and just see how cool I could get it. So I went to plus 80 on the fan speed and then plus 80 on the pump speed. Um, and I was getting temps down to 45 degrees Celsius, which again was a huge improvement over 48 for still a reasonable amount of noise. And I don't think it would be overworking the pump especially if you were using it in a um, you know, a short period of time or during one session of gaming or something like that. I think it would be totally acceptable to do that. So looking back at a comparison between the stock cooler and the Kraken X42 attached to a Kraken G12 cooler, you are gonna get a really good performance, especially in a 1070, 1080 configuration. Obviously, I haven't tested this on a 480 or a 580, which would be a nice thing to test. Maybe you guys can let me know if that's something you would wanna see in the future. Uh, but I think it's totally worth it now. One thing that would be nice to see from this kit in the future is some way to maybe in improve stability of your graphics card. Now, when you look at a card like this, uh, a lot of you have probably seen it with yours. You get a lot of GPU sag with you know the weight of your back plate and the front plate and the cooler and all that good stuff that comes on the card from the factory. You already have a lot of GPU sag. Now, 
Imagine you strip all of that away and you mount this bracket that's made to be compatible with a large array of cards um, and it's kind of retained in place by one bracket which is around the GPU itself, right? It's not bolted in multiple places on the card. So at that point you lose a lot of rigidity with your card and you're still adding weight by adding the AIO cooler to the other side. And so I do see a little bit of uh, increased GPU sag. It's not anything that I'm really worried about. However, it would be nice if maybe there was a way that the retention bracket could maybe go over the top of the GPU to the back side and maybe bolt where the uh, retention brackets come from the back side and go all the way through to the front side. So it kind of sandwiches that card and keeps it from flexing maybe. I'm not sure if that's even possible for them to do, but it would be nice to see on a future uh, you know, model maybe some way to kind of inc increase stability on the GPU itself. That being said, this is a flaw that I would gladly accept in exchange for the amount of cooling performance we're gaining without having to get crazy with a custom loop. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys in showing you how the install went for me and of course showing you all the little bumps that I hit along the way and of course the info I provided based on what kind of performance I saw in my scenario. If for some reason I missed something or you guys have any questions, something I didn't cover, feel free to go ahead and leave those in the comments section below. Of course I wanted to say a quick thanks to NZXT for giving me the opportunity to take a look at the G12 and share this info with you guys. Of course if you guys liked the video, it's a huge help if you can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Just let me know how you felt on the way out. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, this has been Joe's Tech. I'll see you in the next one.